The classic Hollywood monsters, Dracula, the Frankenstein's monster, the mummy, and the wolfman, all have European origins. This is not too surprising, given the cultural heritage of the United States. The same pattern appears in international horror movies, especially those made in the Western world. Many Mexican horror movies follow the Eurocentric Hollywood model. However, a number of Mexican films overlay the standard Dracula, Wolfman, Frankenstein, Mummy pattern with indigenous themes, concepts, and motifs. These include the Aztec mummy films. After vampires, mummies are probably the most prolific menace in Mexican fantasy film. Universal's 1932 The Mummy marks the true beginning of mummy cinema. The script reflected popular ideas about reincarnation and capitalized on the increased interest in Egyptology after the well-publicized discovery of King Tut's tomb in the early 1920s. In the 1940s and beyond, the mummy on film became a shuffling murder machine with little or no personality. Still, the basic concept was popular and has continued to be so over the last six decades. When Mexican cinema began making horror movies in earnest in the latter half of the 1950s, the basic mummy template was given a local angle and the Aztec mummy was born. Films about pre-conquest Mexico, the conquest itself and its immediate aftermath are relatively rare. Tribu 1934 and Chilambalam 1955 are two early examples and a few others exist. However, there was no robust Aztec film or Mayan film genre to build upon. Mexicans are proud of the high level of civilization achieved by the Aztecs and Mayans and their popular culture reflects this. However, the Spanish conquistadores are credited with bringing Christianity to Mexico, thereby modifying the more barbaric practices of the native inhabitants. In one scene in La Momia Azteca, the mummy is held at bay by a crucifix a graphic illustration of Christianity's triumph over paganism. Nonetheless, the human sacrifices of the Aztecs always make for good cinema. Although producer Abel Salazar's El Vampiro is one of the first classic Mexican horror movies, other film companies had the same idea. El Vampiro went before the cameras at the Estudios Clase in May 1957, but by that time Cinematográfica Calderón had already shot three Aztec mummy movies in the same facility. This rapid turnover was achieved by an innovative shooting technique. All three feature films were made back to back with the second and third movies using increasingly large amounts of flashback footage from their predecessors. In 1956 producer Pedro Calderón had made a trio of musical comedies with identical casts and crews in less than one month. A year later Pedro's brother Guillermo Calderón decided to utilize this economical method for his Aztec Mummy series, even hiring the same director to supervise the trilogy, which went into production in March 1957. Rafael Portillo, a former film editor and screenwriter, was the director. Although he made nearly 40 features, including comedies, musicals, and dramas, Portillo is best known for the Aztec Mummy films. He also worked as the union-designated shadow director on numerous Hollywood pictures filmed in Mexico, such as The Devil's Reign. Portillo's previous experience as a film editor on more than three dozen movies undoubtedly came in handy when planning and shooting the Aztec mummy pictures, since La Maldicción de la Momia Azteca and La Momia Azteca contra el Robot Humano took full advantage of footage from La Momia Azteca to pad out their running times. La Momia Azteca was one of a number of movies inspired by the reincarnation fad of the mid-1950s, precipitated by a best-selling book entitled The Search for Bridie Murphy. Although critics debated the veracity of its claims, the book told the story of a 20th century housewife who via hypnotism regressed to a past life as a poor Irish servant girl. Hollywood quickly capitalized on the concept, making a film adaptation of The Search for Bridie Murphy, as well as other reincarnation movies like I've Lived Before, The Undead, and The She Creature. The screen story for the Mummy trilogy utilizes the Bridie Murphy regression to past life via hypnotism motif and throws in elements from Hollywood serials and B-pictures such as a mummy, a masked superhero, a robot, and a mad scientist, and paints it all with a veneer of pre-conquest Mexican history.
The films depict the attempts of the sinister Dr. Krupp to obtain artifacts which will reveal the location of a lost Aztec treasure. This upsets Popoca, the Aztec mummy, a warrior entombed alive for daring to love a princess who just happens to have been reincarnated as the film's modern-day heroine. The revived mummy goes on a quest to retrieve his stolen breastplate and bracelets. Popoca, impersonated by Italian-born stuntman Angel Di Stefani, eschewed the Hollywood Egyptian mummy look for a ragged Aztec costume, long stringy hair, and a wizened face. Popoca is a monster, but not necessarily a villain in these films. He's primarily interested in protecting his ancient treasure from Dr. Krupp, who has a famous European name. One could, without too much imagination, read these movies as allegories about the need to protect Mexico's historic heritage and natural resources from foreign exploitation, thus casting the mummy in a rather favorable patriotic light. Despite the economical circumstances of its production, the Aztec Mummy trilogy does not have a cheap, low-budget look. Filmed at the Colasa Studios, which ironically went out of business a few months after the series was shot, the well-crafted sets, judicious use of actual locations, and stock footage helped bolster the production values. Each movie of the Aztec Mummy trilogy has a unique gimmick, despite the fact the same cast appears in all three films and the basic plot premise is reused three times. Dr. Krupp wants to obtain the hidden Aztec treasure, the mummy wants to protect it. La Momia Azteca is the closest to a traditional horror movie, Maldicción is an action film featuring a masked superhero, and Robot Humano adds science fiction to the mix. The Aztec mummy films made their mark internationally. In addition to receiving theatrical playdates in Europe, the films got cinema and television exposure via the English dub versions by K. Gordon Murray, Curse of the Aztec Mummy, and The Robot vs. the Aztec Mummy. The latter film especially became a cult favorite in its dubbed incarnation. A monstrous nightmare of terror, turn loose in a fight to the death. The Robot vs. the Aztec Mummy. They will bring you a night of terror. We dare you to see them, but don't come alone. The Vampire's Coffin. In an all-new double horrorama show with The Robot versus the Aztec Mummy. Presented in Hypnoscope. The height and the horror, shock your senses, heal your brain. It could only be shown at midnight. In addition to Murray's mummy movies, the Aztec mummy lived on in several patchwork films created by Jerry Warren. Attack of the Mayan Mummy, which actually uses very little footage from the Mexican movie, and Face of the Screaming Werewolf. Scenes from La Momia Azteca, ironically not of the mummy itself, can even be glimpsed in Warren's The Wild World of Batwoman. The original Aztec Mummy trilogy, as all popular films do, inspired sequels and imitations. We'll take a look at those in the next part of this episode.